Before we get started with the game settings, I just want to say that that cinematic you just saw, there was no color correction in post-process editing, and all, it's just completely raw DCS footage apart from a bit of reshade, which is in-game. So here we are in the actual graphics settings. So we're going to start at the beginning, and remember, this is for mid-range PCs, so your graphics card would be something like a 3060 RTX 3060 Ti, 3060 RTX 2070, that kind of graphics card and their AMD equivalents. So starting with textures and terrain textures, these just make the game look good, so I try and have them on high. Civilian traffic, big one for your CPU, keep this on low or off if you're doing a complex mission with vehicles on roads because if you have civilian traffic on the roads and you've got like an armoured convoy going down a road the civilian traffic will go through that armoured convoy as because they're immortal they will just drive straight through it as if nothing was there it won't damage the armoured convoy but it won't look good but if you're doing a free flight or something feel free to have this like on high or medium because it just makes it look nice we'll leave it on low for now water this doesn't make a lot of difference to how the game looks, so I just keep it on medium. Visibility range is extreme. I like to have this on extreme because again, it makes the game look good. And also, it increases the range at which enemy planes and friendly planes are rendered. Heat flare, I've never really experimented with this, but I'm happy with low. Shadows, medium. This affects your FPS quite a lot with like sunsets, as I said, and also with lots of objects that you're looking at. So I just keep this on medium. Flat shadows blur and secondary shadows off. And just a note, I almost forgot, but this note is to say that these graphic settings are for complex missions and multiplayer. If you're just poodling around doing like single player, just um, single player free flight missions and other things like that, just a quick dogfight, then feel free to just have these switched on. It won't affect your performance that much. But if you're doing a complex mission with lots of objects and things, definitely have these off, these two here. Resolution. I would recommend setting this to the maximum your monitor can produce, unless your monitor is something like a 4K monitor. Then I would recommend having this at 1440p. Because a mid-range graphics card, you can't expect that to run DCS in 4K at anything more than 30fps. And if you have degraded this, make sure to have this full screen selected because otherwise the game will only feel like two thirds of your screen because it's only using 1920 by 1080 pixels if you see what I mean. You set this to how many screens you're using for DCS. Resolution of cockpit displays, I have this on 1024, don't bother about the every frame, doesn't make any difference. And um, yeah, if you have a lower resolution monitor definitely have this high. And also if you have a higher resolution, have it high, just makes it look good. And especially on a lower resolution monitor, it enables you to actually read what the dials are saying. MSAA, two times. This is your anti-aliasing. If you've got a higher resolution monitor like me, which is, my monitor is 2K, don't bother having this high. It won't make a lot of difference to how the game looks. Depth of field, I have this uh, switched on for some shots and off for others depends what I'm looking at, what sort of type of shot I'm doing, but it does degrade your FPS a lot. If I'm doing a track file that I'm recording footage from, if I have this switched on, I'll be getting like 60 FPS, and if I have it switched off, I'll be getting more like 90. But for just external shots, it's about 60 is fine. Lens effects, flare, this is what Spadknocker uses. It looks quite good like this, I've never experimented with the others, but as Spadnocker uses Flare, I would recommend just switching it on too. It doesn't make any difference to performance at all. Motion blur is off, and the amount, that's not applicable. Clouds are on high, sometimes I'll switch this to Ultra if I'm just doing a single player or a quick dogfight. But high is fine and doesn't make a lot of difference to what you see. Super sample anti-aliasing, this is switched off as is uh, local reflections and ambient occlusion. I've never experimented with these and I don't want to because the game looks fine as it does. Clutter and grass is set to full because it looks then really nice when you're taxiing. I don't fly helicopters but if I did it would make it look nice if you fly helicopters as well because otherwise you just get like the flat terrain with no grasses or anything it's just like flat texture. Forest visibility, this is quite a big one for multiplayer, 
I did have it on 100, but then realized when I put it down to 60 that I got a quite a big FPS increase on especially growling side of the server. And this is because um, this, you have to download when you're multiplayer, you're doing multiplayer, you have to download the data from the multiplayer server about every inch of the map to see what's happened there, if there's a crash site there or anything. So if you just switch this to 60%, it takes less time to download those details and so you get less lag when loading in the terrain. This is set to 1 and scenery details factor is also set to 1. Although I will reduce this sometimes if I'm doing a complex mission and I'm flying low to the ground because that increases performance. Preload radius, I think this is just a default. If you get lower FPS, try increasing this, but I just have it on this, which is 10,000. Not 10,000, 100,000. Chimney smoke density doesn't make a lot of difference to what the game sees, so I would just keep it at 1. I think, yeah, it said the default was 5, so if it's on 5, just reduce it to 1. Gamma is on 2, I will vary this between 1.8 and 2, depending on what I'm doing, what the time of day is. 2.2 is what DCS recommends, but I would recommend something like this. External field of view, which I've never touched. Anisotropic filtering, 16 times, just bang it all the way up to 16 times, because it doesn't affect your performance. It does say it's modern GPU hit, but just don't bother about that, it's fine. Terran object shadows, never touched, but it says try to set flat or disable if you feel performance degrade. So if you're getting low performance, try doing them off or flat. I have it default. Global cockpit illumination, it just illumin it makes the cockpit a bit brighter, regardless of where the sun is, so you can see dials better. I have this switched on. Never touch these two. Rain droplets are quite a performance, quite a small performance hit, but it does make things look really good in bad weather. Having those raindrops going down your canopy. V Sync is a big one. If you have a lower resolution monitor, such as a 60 Hz monitor or even to 90 Hz monitor, this is going to be a big one for you. You must have it ticked because otherwise, if your game is rendering and getting you uh, like 120 or 100 FPS, you're going to get a lot of screen tearing because your monitor refresh rate can't cope with it. VSync just limits your FPS to what your monitor can choose. So I have this switched off because I have a 144Hz monitor and I rarely get that much FPS in the game. Full screen, doesn't matter whether you have this switched on or off if you have your resolution set to the max. But if you've degraded the resolution to like 1920 by 1080 then definitely have this ticked because otherwise, as I've said before, the game will only fill two thirds of your screen or so because it's only using that many pixels. And this, however you like. So there we go and now we're going to move on to the NVIDIA control panel where I've changed a few settings. Okay so here we are in the NVIDIA control panel. This is the default page. As you can see I've adjusted these values for my monitor. So we're going to go to manage 3D settings takes a while to load and here we go so here you can see program settings I'm going to enlarge it a bit so you can see it better oh, let me enlarge it never mind program settings just here and we're going to go it's already selected this for me but you will need to probably select it from the drop down so there we go select digital combat simulator and then we're going to go to here all these now the back black ones in bold are the ones I've changed. So I've put this to application controlled. This is set to off, gamma correction off, anti-aliasing mode, application controlled, anti all anti-aliasing is off. Background application max frame rate 60 FPS. Definitely have this on, because that means that your computer will not spend time if you have things running in the background like OBS it will not try and do that at your max monitor refresh rate you'll just do it at 60 FPS saving performance for your actual game this is set to on low latency mode and the max frame rate it's set to 144 which is the max my monitor can produce there's no point having it set higher than that because well, there just isn't because you, you won't be able to see frame rate that higher without lots of screen tearing so this is set off, and here we go. 
OpenGL rendering GPU, you need to click on this and select your GPU from the drop down here. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance because that will give you the highest FPS. Preferred refresh rate, highest available. Texture filtering on texture filtering clamp. Texture filtering is quality is performance. So that helps you get higher FPS. Or you can set it to quality and maybe get some performance downgrade but get nicer quality uh, shots. This is set to on. Threaded optimization is auto. Triple buffering, I have this set on because it reduces stutter. Vertical sync, use the application setting. And that's it for all I have changed. Now, depending on GPU, you may not have some of these settings, so don't worry about that. It's just because you have a different GPU. And if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU at all, then I don't know what to do for your AMD control panel. But this is what I do in the NVIDIA control panel for those of you that have NVIDIA GPUs. And as I said before, depending on your GPU, you may not have some of these settings. So just do what you can. Okay, so now for the thing that makes my DCS what it is, just applies a slight amount of color correction in the actual game itself while I'm playing, that's reshade. To get this, you want to type reshade.me in your search bar, reshade.me, and then you want to click on this download button here, you want to click this button here, download reshade 5.8.0 or whatever the latest version is, don't bother with this one, just click this one. Once you've downloaded it, Click on this reshade underscore setup underscore version number dot uh, exe file. Open that, and then you'll be presented with this. You want to, this screen. You want to click browse, and you want to browse for your game. So I go to this, my games folder, my DCS folder, and then I go to my binary multi-threading folder because I use multi-threading. If you don't use multi-threading, just go to the normal binary folder but go to I go to the multi-threading folder and I click on DCS we're gonna click next DCS uses direct X but it's moving to Vulcan soon I think so it might have changed you will need to check that but at the moment it uses direct X and you want to click next so I already have reshade installed but as you won't have you will want to it will just continue to the next um, thing in the installation process but I'm gonna click modify just because it will show practically the same thing select preset to install now I'm going to browse for my preset and my presets are stored in this folder I have quite a lot of presets so you just have to find my preset that I use at the moment it's this one and I will send this to you, it will be in my Discord server and I will provide a link to the Discord below. It will be under the hashtag Mission Farms. So you will be able to find this preset. It will probably have a different name, but it will be exactly the same preset. So you can select the preset to install. You will want to place it and once you've downloaded the preset, you want to place it under the binary, binary folder you installed Reshade under to be able to find it as quickly as possible. You click next and it will automatically select all the effects you need for this preset but I generally have other ones that I use if I make a different preset I can't remember what they are now so you just experiment with the ones you like click next because it's done that as I said before automatically selected all the shaders that you need for the preset and so then it will download all the colors and the shaders and then it's successfully installed reshade. We're going to click finish and then you're going to open the game. And I'll catch up with you once you've opened the game. Okay, so now we're in the game of TCS and it should come up saying press home to open the configuration overlay. Now once you press that you'll be presented with this screen and it should ask you if you want a quick tutorial. Just press skip on that. You can see up here that it's automatically installed our preset. And so first of all we're going to go to settings up here and we're going to set our effectography. I have it set to Control Alt and S and that's quite a good one because I don't think any other there's no command in DCS that uses that. So this will 
whenever we want to compare our reshape preset with the default DCS, we just press Ctrl or S and it will revert back to the original. Get rid of that. So now if I press Ctrl or S, this is with the preset installed. Now if I press Ctrl or S, that's without the preset. This is with the preset. Now this is not a very good screenshot to compare it with because it makes everything look a bit blue. So we're just going to set something else as the wallpaper. Let's go with the China Asset Pack. This is a different screenshot. Press Ctrl or S. That's without it. This is vanilla. Switch it on. That's with reshade. Reshade off. Reshade on. Reshade off. Reshade on. So you can see it just adds a bit more color and also sharpens things as well. You can see I have the colorfulness preset. I have the curves preset, the levels preset, the sharpen preset, the technicolor preset, the cine tools preset, the contrast stretch preset, and the color blend preset. Because you installed that preset that I have, these are all set to the values that are in my preset. You don't have to do any adjusting at all unless you want to change the preset yourself. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Also, please let me know in the comments if you found this helpful. Bye for now.